It's great to be uh, in the Harrisburg area. It was a very interesting transition. I had auditioned for the job. I've auditioned for three jobs in 34 years. Um, no, actually four. And uh, that's always an exciting thing. You come in, you show a little of yourself, and then uh, most of the time you're bitterly rejected. <laughs> and uh, either hit the booze or whatever. Uh, that didn't happen here. So I'm really, really happy about that. Uh, I want to open up with a few things. The, the reason I was brought here, uh, not against my will, was to share some things we can do, some methodologies, some tools we can use as Christians and conservatives to penetrate a media that really doesn't give us uh, our due. Um, and you'll find when I start sharing some of these facts with you, we already have the high ground. We already have the foundation. It, it's not like we have to go and recruit a bunch of people that are conservative. Most Americans are. It's not like we have to go around the world and say, come on, Jesus is the Son of God. Most people know it, and most people believe it, statistically. But if you go on MSNBC, if you're in one of the 17 or 18 people that watch their cable news channel, <laughs> they don't see it that way. Like today's announcement of uh, the transgender military. And my grandpa is still spinning in the grave. I mentioned that at 2 o'clock, he's still spinning with a pack of Luckies and a Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. <laughs> so let's start with some basics. Um, the most important thing, a word is worth a thousand pictures. I heard that quote about 35 years ago from the head of uh, the FCC. I was at a convention in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it so captivated me, and he said, <clears throat> excuse me, he said, you know, everybody talks about pictures, but a word, a word instantly connects to your conscience, to your imagination, to your experiences. If I put a picture up here of a house, and, and that was my, my statement, that was my message to you, or, or if I said house, if I said, think about your dream house, what would it be? As opposed to, this house could be your dream house. The point of the word is worth a thousand pictures. We need to choose wisely the words we use. They're tools. They're not weapons. They're tools. There's a difference. There's a difference. On MSNBC, words are weapons. We use them as tools. I'd like to think I use them as tools. Somebody called me today after I got off the air with uh, Ron Miller and said, Man, I can't believe you didn't go after that guy. Da, da, da. I said, look, what happened was <clears throat> I gave him room so he can't make anything that happens about me. He can't make it about me. He can't say, well, yeah, that just happened because Ken Matthews wouldn't let me get a word in edgewise, or that just happened because Ken was all angry. I just said, what say you about this? What say you about that? Boom, boom, boom. Um, and that took me a long time to learn. Because I've always been conservative. There was no liberal conservative conversion. I was a conservative at 12 years old. And I was obnoxious. <laughs> much more than now. You can ask my boss, much more. And in my 20s, I was even worse. And it wasn't until my 30s, um, it was my either sixth or seventh firing, that I learned <laughs> what I say impacts people and it really impacts me. Uh, <laughs> so choose your words wisely. Use words that empower people. And what we need to do as Christians and as conservatives, we never want to give up our, don't give up your values, don't give up your position. I'm not asking anybody to, like I didn't give up my values or my passions as a Christian and a conservative, but what I did do is I gave up a lot of the baggage that came with the rejection. Because let's face it, when you're watching TV and they say, you know, 79% of people think we should be able to marry dogs, and you're like, well, where did you get that statistic? All of a sudden you're getting angry, right? Mm -hmm. You see that, I, I just saw some, uh, the Terry Madonna guy, he's a holster. <laughs> Yeah, he just said that it was some crazy Pennsylvania gay marriage poll he took. And I, I buzzed on it. I said, where did he get those numbers? 
Now, <clears throat> rather than getting angry at him, going on the air and saying, what a crock of crap. <laughs> I found out the real numbers. And then I went on the air and said, you know what happens is, people like Terry McDonough or other pollsters, they can go out in the hall and talk to 10 people. And if they go out to the hall at an Obama convention and talk to 10 people, and nine of them love Madonna, one's unsure, then I can go on the air and say, you know, nine out of 10 people love Madonna, and one of them is unsure. And that is how they control the message. In the United States, there's 246 million conservatives, Christians, 79.5% of the population are Christians in the United States. 79% identify themselves as Christian. In Brazil, there's 176 million Christians. It's 90% of the population in Brazil. What do you see in the news about Brazil? Uh, that's all I'm going to do that. But that's, if I said to you, the Joneses went on vacation to Brazil. It's 90% Christian. You know how many cathedrals and places of worship there are there? 90% of the country. 108 million people in Mexico are Christians. 95% of the population. This is stuff you don't hear in the news. Nobody says that. When was the last time someone did a story on Brazil and said, you know, 90% of the population is Christian? No, they're too busy telling me that, you know, people want transgender special ops officers. And the woman that just married her dog that Russia was talking about over in England. There's 41,000 Christian denominations and organizations in the entire world. There are 6 million books about Christianity in print today. 6 million books. 78 million Bibles are distributed worldwide every year. You see what I mean by we already have the foundation. We already have the infrastructure in place. But like some conservatives, and we've all made this mistake, <clears throat> someone who talks as much as me, I make mistakes all the time. We have to be careful that we don't steal victory or... Uh, thank you. Steal something from something. You know what I'm talking about. Thank you. And that's what we do. That's what we do. Because here's what the media says. The media says conservatives are angry white men that hate any type of diversity. And Christians are preachy and all the other things they say. And we all know that's not true. How, let, let me ask you this. How could that be true? If almost 80% of the population is Christian, why would so many people partake in such a wonderful thing? And that drives the people that aren't in it crazy. Crazy. Chris Matthews is driving home from MSNBC. He passes my church. He sees everybody coming out on a Sunday. Sight. He's like, what the heck is that? They don't watch my show. They're all happy about God. <laughs> There's got to be a way I can throw mud at that. They're crazy. They're lunatics. They clean the guns. We already have the high ground. So how is it that the media has defined us? And I just told you. They say we're old. We're out of touch. <clears throat> we don't care. We don't listen. I would challenge anybody. I challenge people that disagree with me to listen to my show. Because I, don't, I, I enjoy preaching to the choir. I like friendly crowds. I like tables full of desserts. <laughs> of course, not not now because I'm going to Florida in Maine, and I want to get uh, in May, and I'm, I want to get a two piece. So <laughs> those, those cupcakes look great. So my challenge to you tonight: find things in our culture, find people in our culture and collective history, use them as touch points for what we believe in as a reference point. And I'm gonna give you an example here. Because we all the time, all the time we hear, and I love it because I'm a, I'm a political geek, I'm a wonk, I like to read a lot, I love good quotes, I love hearing people speak about the greatness of our nation and our God. <clears throat> but I like to find the things that are off the beating trail that I can share with people that may or may not be 
on the same page as me. This is an example. I love America, this person goes on to say, because America is not just a country, it's an idea. You see, my country, Ireland, is a great country, but it's not an idea. America is an idea, but it's an idea that brings with it some baggage, like power brings responsibility. It's an idea that brings with it equality, but equality, even though it's the highest calling, is the hardest to reach. The idea that anything is possible, that's one of the reasons I'm a fan of America. That's the kind of America that I'm a fan of. In 1771, one of your founders, Mr. Franklin, spent three months in Ireland and Scotland to look at the relationship they had with England, to see if this could be a model for America, whether America should follow their example and remain a part of the British Empire. Franklin was deeply, deeply distressed by what he saw. In Ireland, he saw how England had put a stranglehold on Irish trade, how absentee English landlords exploited Irish tenant farmers, and how those farmers, in Franklin's words, lived in wretched hovels of mud and straw, were, were clothed in rags and subsisted chiefly on potatoes. Not exactly the American dream. So instead of Ireland becoming a model for America, America became a model for Ireland. You know who said that? The lead singer of U2, Bono. <laughs> so you go into the culture, you, you leave where we are, and you go into the culture and you find touch points. And you go, wow, that, you mean that hot actress is a conservative? Holy shnikes. <laughs> Spread the message. How many people have seen Noah? The movie Noah? Not out yet. Not out yet? Good reason. <laughs> <laughs> How many people have seen Son of God? How is it? Terrific. Okay. Only two or three people in here have seen Son of God. My advice is you go see Son of God. Why? Because it is right in the epicenter of where views and perceptions are created. It's in the media. It's, it's a movie. It's at the Cinemax. That's what you want to do. You want to go see that movie. And you want to post it on your Facebook, on your Twitter, at your book club, at the gym, and you want to say, you're not going to believe this Son of God movie. It is incredible. And they follow the Bible to a T, etc., etc. That's how you do it. As opposed to, I can't believe you're not coming to church with me this weekend. Because we control the message. People are always shocked when I tell them that was Bono. Because you think, rock and roll... You think uh, helping raise money for Obama, but I don't think you'd do it now, to be honest with you. You probably wouldn't. So I want you to think about ways that you can get your message and wrap it in what people are excited about. You know, our Constitution, here's another great quote I like, our Constitution has lasted longer than any other Constitution in modern history. So when you're having that debate, about our current president and the abuses of the Constitution. You can say, you know, our Constitution has lasted longer than any other Constitution in modern history. We cannot take these blessings for granted. We must share these. They are gifts from God. You know who said that? Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. It's funny, I never heard that quote last month during Black History Month. It's amazing how many incredible conservative powerful pro-American quotes you can dig up, and I didn't bring them all in, from Martin Luther King Jr. And some of the great leaders, you see where I'm going with this, I'm saying you find what the media would think is an unlikely touch point, and then you own it. That is what I try to do in, in radio. I wasn't always in conservative radio, I started in 1980. I've only worked at a talk radio station for seven months. But I've always thought, you know what people think about people in media? They think this, this, and this. Those three things I'm not going to be. And you know what people think about uh, conserv uh, conservative Christians? I'm not going to be what Chris Matthews says I have to be. I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to be fun. I always joke with Art. I said, I, I put the fun in anger. <laughs> don't take the bait people want you to take the bait so think of ways think of ways to engage people into a questioning process not judgment 
And I know judgment's a component of Christianity, but if you want people to see what you're talking about, you have to do it on their stage. Now, briefly, we all know what 666 means, right? It's the number of the beast, right? 668 is the next door neighbor of the beast. 666.000 is a high precision beast. And, and 1900 666 is a number if you want to call and talk one on one with the beast live. Just want to put that out there. Oh, come on, one more. What do you get when you cross a Lutheran and a Buddhist? Someone who sits up all night worrying about nothing. <laughs> now let me tell you what I believe in my, in my brief experience in life and lots of rejection and failure. The most powerful thing in any relationship is a smile. Is what? Smile. A smile. The most powerful thing in any communication. I'm not saying you need to walk in dressed like, you know, Ronald McDonald, wank, wank. <laughs> but when someone is smiling, you got them. Because everybody wants to smile. We're all supposed to engage. We're humans. We're supposed to get along. All that BS that Harry Reid spews but isn't the truth. But the reality is, if you start from the smile, you can educate people. I mean, whose culture is it anyway? Our culture is Americans, we're all American, voters, taxpayers, Christians, conservative. We're part of this culture regardless of what the media says. You know, and, and people on uh, TMZ or the Hollywood Network can say, oh, the, you know, old white guys can't dance all they want, but I know plenty of old white guys that can dance. I've been to a wedding or two. <laughs> Do you know conservatives outnumber liberals in 47 out of 50 states? Yet every time I turn on the mainstream media, well, the country's getting more liberal. What? Are you kidding me? I don't see it at all. And this is a great example. Nationally, the amount of people that identify themselves as conservative is 38%. Liberals are only 23. So I don't know where they get these numbers. It's like when Obama says, good news, unemployment's down. On what planet? <laughs> In the galaxy of Zepton? <laughs> Unemployment is down where? In the summer. Exactly. <laughs> you got it. I mean, <clears throat> we have a responsibility as Christians. I'm not saying, uh, you know, I, I really want to spread the word about Christianity and I want to spread the word about uh, conservatism, so I'm going to go undercover and go to a naked drug party. I'm not saying that. But there's a lot of things that we can open up to and listen to and communicate with and just let them sit there. You know, I bring up my dad because uh, there's certain things my dad just won't do or certain things he just won't see. He's, he's 75 and <clears throat> he says, uh, I'll say to my mom, we'll, they'll both be on the phone, I'll be calling from the car or something. And I'll say, mom, did you see the movie whatever? Or what was the movie I saw recently? That, oh, Gravity, I love Gravity. Yeah, it was gravity. And I said, oh man, that was really good. And all of a sudden, there goes my dad. I can't stand that George Clooney. <laughs> what a stinking liberal. But dad, he's, he's a pretty good actor. I mean, that, that, that really didn't have a lot of politics. And yeah, I, ever since he came out for Obama, I can't. I, the, the sight of him makes me sick. <laughs> but let's face it, we all feel that way. We all feel that way. We just don't have to say it. We just don't have to say it. You know, I, about three, three weeks ago, I had a, a very nice woman call the show. We were talking about gay marriage, and she told me right up front she was a lesbian. She enjoys the show, and yada, yada. And, and we had this great conversation. And I said, well, you know, I'm not for gay marriage. She said, oh, I, I understand that. She goes, you know, I'm, I'm sort of with you on it. I think we should be, you know, civil union, but I, don't, I just don't think that we as gay people should shove what we want down your throat as far as marriage. Now, the power, the power of that conversation being heard by all those people, and me not saying, oh, so you like women, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say you were lesbian? Hold on a second. 
The media wants conflict. They need it. They need it. That's why when, uh, you know, 15,000 people show up to support a Marine or a pro-gun situation or a 9-12 or a Tea Party, you get a shot of one guy in the corner, okay, in his underwear with applesauce on his shirt, <laughs> cleaning a <the> gun. <laughs> Earlier today, there was a conservative uh, protest. Several people showed up, and you see this one guy that looks like he's ready to blow up the earth. <laughs> then, and this was the best, and I called my local people on this too. I was so ticked. Um, there were about nine people protesting on the corner when Sarah Palin came to uh, Allentown. Nine people. I counted them because I was there. I was on my way home from work. But what they did is they got all those nine people in one shot. And if you crop it, it looks tight. It's a tight shot. And that's the games that are played. So how do we beat that? Well, besides explaining it, besides calling them the liars and, you know, stump-sucking maggots in the press that they are, <clears throat> I think we can go about it a little bit more fun. The media narrative. Christians are fair game. We know that. Christians are fair game. I mean, let's face it, if you mention online, you're going to get blown up. If I, if I start making Muslim jokes, you're going to hear my car's boom. <laughs> but if you, if you look at the news, if you look at Saturday Night Live, if you just look at the portal that we get our information from, Jesus has always been fair game. And you know why? Because we can take it. Because it's the real deal. That's why it's real. It's the real deal. You can make fun of me all day long. Jesus is the Son of God and the subject. You know, you can say you worship rocks. I don't care. You can make fun. You can make Jesus jokes. I don't really care. Jesus has a huge sense of humor. Look at the world. <laughs> you don't think the man has a sense of humor? Do you know why Jesus was born in a manger? Three months Mary waits to get on Obamacare. Three months. <laughs> said, Joseph, this is, I'm done. We're having it in the major. <laughs> man, man. And then, then you get the ignorant comparisons of Christianity. Well, you know, uh, Christianity is just as bad as radical Islam. And, you know, terrorist groups, Christian, oh, God. We have a whole generation. They got their, they got their health care information from Michael Moore. They got their, their history about John F. Kennedy from, uh, what's his name, Oliver Stone. It's a whole generation. Women in Christianity. What, what religion empowers women more than Christianity? There isn't one. There isn't one. What political party empowers women and celebrates women more than conservatism? There isn't one. So, my advice to you is several fold. We want to get into the culture. We don't want to sell out, but we certainly can listen more. And trust me, the smile thing works. You know, I, uh, I'm down to like three liberal friends. <laughs> but it's still a pretty good relationship. And it's the, and it's the smile that does it. There's, a, there's a, a woman in my neighborhood. She's a Brit. And her and her husband are a lovely couple. And I had no idea until we started talking one day how much she despised Obama. I mean, I was when I heard that, I was like, whoa, this is great. Oh, gosh, come on, haters. But she loves Hillary. So I'm split. I'm split. Right down the middle. I don't, I don't know whether to let the air out of time. Hate your house. I get, I'm so torn. But we have great conversations. And she says things like this. And I respect her. I don't roll my eyes and go, oh, so medicine again. <laughs> she says, you know, in England, I said, well, you have to understand, in England, first of all, when everybody talks about socializing this, I, I, this is not an Obamacare lecture, so I'll get back on point in a minute. But people compare things that should not be compared to. They don't compare apples and oranges. They compare, like, a pea and a watermelon. <laughs> and that's what they do with Obamacare. Is that me? Or is that you? Oh, it's probably you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's God. I 
did go over the top with the bridge joke. Okay. Maybe I should. Hello? So, back into the culture we go. Who does the media celebrate? The cheater, the dysfunctional, the criminal, the falling apart. Oh my gosh, we've got uh, the mother cheating with seven husbands, she has 14 kids, and it's great, she's in a limo, and oh, what a great show that'll be. <laughs> and then you have something powerful like Son of God, and you went to see it, right? I believe it's our obligation, though, as Christians, that's where our responsibility yes. does come in, yes. to look for and find tools in the media that we can leverage to move our cause ahead. Son of God is a great example. Passion of the Christ, a great example. There's some great books out there. I just had Alfonso um, Rachel on my show. I don't know if you had a chance to hear him. 41-year-old black guy living in L.A., very conservative. And what did he say? He, what did he say? He said this, and it, it was an astute observation by someone who really knows his stuff. He said, Ken, just because people are really angry at Obama right now, and their and their disillusion with the left doesn't mean they're going to come running over to the right. Mm -hmm. We always see. I I used to presume that. Oh, they're so ticked at Obama, they're going to vote for John McCain. <laughs> come on, I'm going to vote for the woman at Wawa. She has a better platform than John McCain and a better memory. <laughs> Quality programming sells when you find it, buy it, buy Steve's book. I bought two copies of Steve's book, um, Rush Limbaugh's book. I bought the first book. The second one just came out for kids. The uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh, Rush Levere, Ru Rush Revere, excuse me. I bought it. I read it. I bought a copy for each of my sons. I said, you're going to read this. You're going to read this. You're going to start. You're going to read a chapter a day, and then we're going to talk about it. Well, my oldest son started reading it, could have put, couldn't put it down. My youngest son loves it, and every morning at breakfast I say, anything pop out in the book? Oh, he goes, yeah, there was this one scene where the, the, uh, the guy, the horse says, you know, maybe I'll be a DJ someday. And he just thought that was hysterical. So the point is, the, when, in other words, instead of focusing on Chris Matthews, who has 11 listeners, and, and CBS, who's losing all their quality journalists, most recently Cheryl Atkinson. I'm a huge fan of Cheryl. If you, if you don't know, she, was, she had her phones tacked during the NSA thing. She was targeted when she went after the Benghazi story. And she finally said, look, I can't deal with this, because she wanted to really rattle the IRS case. So this is a good thing. So find the quality programming. Find the quality books. The touch points, I call them touch points in the media. And here's a little, I guess you call it, what do you call it when you have letters and they spell something out? Acrostic. Acrostic. Thank you, Dunker. <laughs> Listen to others' views every day. What does it spell? L-O-V-E. -E. I just made that up today. Thank you. <laughs> I did. I said, you know, i got to tie this into love because there's going to be Christians there. I, I need to bring the love. But it's true. It's true. Just because you listen to someone else's view doesn't mean you have to agree with it. See, I think sometimes, for example, people like my dad. People like my dad think sometimes that if I say, hey, dad, you know, this, 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 he thinks that he's got to sign on to it. You don't have to sign on to it. When that a woman called me and she said, you know, I'm a lesbian, but I like your show. I'm for civil unions, but I agree with you that the gay community sometimes is way over the top. And, it, you know, they're less than 5% of the population, yet they... They monopolized the media, and she called them, what did she call them? Um, extremists, gay extremists, she said. And she said, that gives us a bad name. So I listened to her, and I realized, you know, that's right. Most of the gay people I know do not march in a parade with wings on and a G-string. They don't. They don't. But the media handpicks what they want to see. The media handpicks it. Think about it. Where do you get your news? Where do you get your news and information? Now there's the internet, but where do you get it? There's a lot of people that get their news from one or two sources, and that's it. And if you say to them, you know, there's a great book out about, uh, for example, there's a great book called Extortion. Steve, Steve and I read that book. Great book, great book about the left and the right and how they raise money and manipulate the playing field financially. But the facts and figures are great. Always take facts to a fight. 
Some more advice. Bring the facts to the fight. Don't show up to the fight. Your, your response cannot be, nah, uh pinko pony. <laughs> that cannot be your response. <clears throat> you have to say, you know, sure. So, so you're a single mom, okay, and then you got the two kids. Now, what happens if the kids go to school? And you have to create an environment where they're thinking, where they're thinking. Questions, laughter, whatever it may be. I told Steve this story off the air the other day. I was, uh, about three weeks ago, I was at Wawa getting some coffee, and Governor Corbett was here, totally coincidentally. And <clears throat> there was a state cop standing out front, I was getting coffee. I saw him, he said hello. He met some people, some people took some pictures. About three weeks later, I went back, um, and I saw the manager there, a very nice lady, probably in her 40s. She manages the, uh, it's not the Wawa, it's a turkey bill across the station. It's a turkey bill. And I said, so has the governor been back in? And she said, Edwin Dell? <laughs> <laughs> now, what I wanted to say was, what planet do you live on? But I didn't. I said, no, the, the, the guy that replaced me. Well, who's that? And that's when I knew Corbett had some message problems. <laughs> because you're in an election year, and the woman across from the radio station thinks you're Ed Rendell. And you bought coffee. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but what I didn't say was, don't you even know who the governor is? <laughs> you do. The culture is what it is. We have to accept it. It's what it is. Miley Cyrus is going to do whatever she wants, and I really don't care. She looks like a guy anyway. She looks like a boy. And I think Lady Gaga's a man. And that's just what I take. I do. Talented, but weird. Technology is what it is. We can't change it. We can't change it. Most people, they may be Christian, but most people don't understand that God is everywhere. Yes. And Christianity is it's surging through every part of our community. It, it pulsated through the creation of our nation. It's everywhere. God is everywhere. Yeah, God is in Miley Cyrus' trailer. He's probably scratching his head like we are. I'm not sure Montana. This is going to take more than a miracle. <laughs> the Ten Commandments are the foundation of our legal system. You never hear that in the news. If we followed those, we wouldn't need the other 26,000 laws and regulations. Amen. And why is it that media is afraid of authentically reporting other religions or other failures? They celebrate the failures of conservatives because they know we're in the majority. They celebrate the failures of Christians because, let's face it, most Christians are pretty happy we're not perfect. See, there's a difference. I am far from that. But we're happy. How could you not be? How could you not be? When the Son of God comes down and gets crucified to clean up your mess, how could you not be happy? It would take a big... It, it, there would be nothing that could be said to me from a manager or a listener that would make me get all bummed. Oh, man. Because inside I'm like, Jesus, see you. And, and that's the thing. And you know what? Christians who are comfortable with their faith, they know that, they show it. Yes. Yep. Um, politicians, <clears throat> Steve, comfortable with the faith, they know it, they show it. He does. So you, you get up to Washington, D.C., or you get into Harrisburg, and there you are, you're bebopping along. You know how some people are, you say, how you doing? And they go, oh, you're <laughs> 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 wait till Friday. <laughs> And some people are like, I'm living the dream, man. Life is good. I'm kicking booty. You don't have to say booty. <laughs> so what happens is there's a lack of authentic reporting about Christians, about conservatives, about everything that's going on, and that further complicates the misunderstanding of the Constitution, of the relationship between the church and state. And before you know it, Rosie O'Donnell's saying to uh, Oprah Winfrey and Whoopi Goldberg, you know, I'm, I'm really concerned about this constitutional crisis. <laughs> what? <laughs> people have given those people credibility. I knew we were, we were in trouble when I saw an 8x10 glossy in a friend's house of Barack Obama sitting in the middle of all the women in the, with the view. I said, we are in trouble. 
There's been a shift in Christian values. This happens because it's easier. It's easier. Nobody wants to take the risk. Nobody wants to take a risk if there's reporting like a talk radio show guy was taking. You know, like every time I, it's tragic when people get hurt. It's tragic. But if someone breaks into your house and you defend yourself and God forbid they lose their life, I celebrate the fact that you have the right to defend yourself and that that might be a deterrent to others. My message is not, we need to sue this guy. My message is, what a great message, kids. See what can happen when you break into Mr. Man's house. You see what can happen, kids? The media is afraid to do that. Christianity can be inconvenient, and we see this in the media and Hollywood. We see how quickly people throw it off. We see how quickly, oh, what's up with the uh, American flag pin that you're wearing all the time? Oh, okay, I'll take it off. I don't want to make you uncomfortable. I don't want to make you uncomfortable in the greatest country on earth. It's about advertising and revenue, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Whether it's political donors, media, advertisers, athletes, sponsors, what is the message that always wins out? Good over bad. It always wins out. No matter how frustrated you get by it, it always wins out. Why? Because of God, you know. That's why it always wins out. And why wouldn't it win out in Washington? Why wouldn't it win out in Harrisburg? So, in conclusion, when you're talking, if, if you're going out on a, a mission, for lack of a better word, and I actually, you know, and some of you may have actually gone on real missions, um, remember this, it's up to us to change the narrative. And every day we have a chance to change. Every day you have a chance to change the narrative. Every time I am um, in, co in contact with any human being, and, and I love uh, seeing youth that have their act together. I was at Wawa in Hamburg today. I had to get gas. It's right behind Cabela's where I used to work at the gun counter a mere seven months ago. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I can relate. I've lived or worked in 12 states. I've been laid off or fired seven times. And in the last seven years, I've worked nine different jobs. So I can sort of relate to the audience. When someone calls me and says, I think I might be losing my house, I can relate. When they call me and say, I had to sell my car, I can relate. I've worked in retail, I've worked in construction. This is a gift. This is truly a gift for me. And I thank God every day. Let me tell you, those of you who have a job you love, love it harder tomorrow. Because they are hard to come by. They are hard to come by. So you go out, you want to make an impression. Think about the big ticket items that really get your blood boiling. Abortion, gay marriage, Adultery. Um, don't start with those. Don't start with those. They're big issues. I'm not saying to fold on them. Because I have my opinion on them too. And if people ask you, you can tell them. But if you want to be the initiator, if you want to be the person that says, Hey, I'm over in your space. Would you like to come over to the conservative space for a little bit? Use something that is going to connect you. Use something that's relatable. And what can we all relate to? Pain. I don't know why I thought of pain when I was thinking of my kids, but I mean, my wife had them. I mean, I did my seven seconds, but she had them. Children, jobs, the greatness of our country. I was talking to my doctor today, who I hadn't seen in about a year. She's really cool. Her husband is a lieutenant colonel in the military. And she said, oh my gosh, <clears throat> my son is going right off the rails. I said, what do you mean? She said, oh, he's 17 and he hates America. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. So what, what's he saying? And, 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 here's what, and here's how the conversation went. <clears throat> she said, well, it says that we're, we're flying drones in other countries, and there's drones in this country. I said, well, he's right. <laughs> she said, really? He said, yeah. <laughs> he's right. Right here in the capital city. Exactly. And I said, you know, um, before you have the lieutenant colonel come home and beat the crap out of him, <laughs> listen to some of his observations. She said, oh, the other day we were at the grocery store, and, and he 
said, she, she said, don't give that detergent. You know what company owns that? She said, look, I just want to clean the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't because they're capitalist pigs and they're keeping the, you know, you know the story. And I said, well, did you, did you go home and research it? Did you find out? How cool would it, would it have been if you went back into his room and said, you know, you're right. You're right. The people that own this are the same people that do that. You know, maybe we should. Now, I'm not saying you have to become a vegetarian and start driving a hybrid, which I embarrassingly had to, because I commute three hours a day. It was tough getting rid of that V8. Um, but I think you know where I'm going. Remember you have the high ground. That's the most incredible thing. I'm amazed at the number. Here's something that's always bothered me. Now, this we all have pet peeves, and my biggest pet peeve is the number of Christians that vote for leftists. <laughs> and we all have experienced that, maybe even in this room. And you know, it's not my fault you're going to burn in the fire pits of hell. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I didn't mean that. I'm just kidding. Just, just kidding. See, that's the approach you don't want to take. That's the approach you don't want to take. <laughs> um, but that always confused me. And it, it, one of one of my uh, best guy buddies at church. He just loves Obama. And we go, you may even see us. His name is Irving. And if, you, if you're ever on my website, you'll see, we'll start sparring. There'll be a spar about Obama. And then he'll come in, and because he is Irving, I approach him gently because I know he's a Christian guy. But what happened is I start approach everybody that way. So when someone goes, you know, well, uh... Romney is Satan and is the spawn of a giant rat. I go, well, you know, here's a good book <laughs> that you maybe want to check out. So it's, us to, it's up to us to change the narrative. It falls on us. There's no excuse. See, we can't, we have to take responsibility. That's what conservatism is. That's what Christianity is. We have to take responsibility for our own message and our own, our own decisions about how we message. We can't say, oh, it's no use. They're just going to keep making fun of what we do. Wrong! We're in the majority. We're in the majority. Why was there only bread and wine at the Last Supper? It was potluck and only men were invited. <laughs> so, you just, when everybody's, they're not ready for it, you just, <laughs> smile. And one thing I want to close with, and this is something I want you to remember. The next time you're having a serious debate or you're having tea or whatever with your friends, 158,000 Christians were martyred last year for their faith. 158,000 Christians died last year worldwide. And, and what, what, are we, what does the media focus on? The media focuses on whatever they need you to believe. So that's what I bring up. When, when someone is talking like a knucklehead, about something they don't know anything about, and it ends up with Christianity. I say, do you know how many Christian organizations are serving the world right now? I said, my own church has four missions, two schools and a hospital, and we're starting one in India. Do you know how many? I said, if you took the Christian dynamic off the planet, it would implode. Exactly. Why? Because Jesus is the Son of God. It's that simple. So, have the facts, bring the facts to the fight, and those of you that carry, bring the gun to the fight, hopefully you don't have to take it out. Um, that's about a wrap. I know it was a bit unorthodox, but that was a real pleasure. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to. You know. is uh, uh, titled Kinsey's Report, Crimes, Consequences, and the Red Queen and the Grand Scheme, written by Judith Reisman. Okay. Read it. It's very intense. Excellent. College level. And the second would be by C. Everett Koop, Francis Schaefer, whatever happened to the human race. Okay. Cool. Any other uh, 
questions or comments, or are you just ready for me to get the heck out of here? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You bring up a great point. Whoever, whoever gets into the to the messaging space first owns it. So that is the hardest thing to undo, but it can be undone, and many brands have done it. Here's a great example for you. Coca-Cola was the first in the space that we knew of in the United States, down in Atlanta, I don't know the exact date. So everybody says, hey, get me a Coke, but they mean get me a dark soda. Scotch tape, the first in the space, so everybody calls Scotch tape. Scotch tape, even though it could be transparent, it could be a tissue, it's another one, okay? Along comes 7-Up, what do they say, on the Uncola. They should have never left that advertising campaign. The Uncola was brilliant. Coming out of the 50s, who owned the space? Big, giant cars, muscle, the great cars that my dad and I still love. What did Volkswagen do in 1967? They said, think small. They shifted the space. So that's what you do, you shift the space. Someone says, well, you know, the Obamacare, and, you know, it's, it's so crazy that they say it's affordable because I have not met anyone whose, whose uh, policy is cheaper. It's funny that they call it affordable. It's you know? the unaffordable care. Act. Yeah, so you have to, you have to rebrand it. It's so hard not to get upset. I know it is, because especially if you're, if you're if, not only if you're losing the argument, but if somebody, if the person that is spewing the misinformation is admired, like, you know, in the media or even in your neighborhood, it's so hard not to, and that's where I have to do my best, and that's where my wife always says, please, don't talk politics, because we know some very, Wonderful people, some very gracious people, though they treat our kids like gold and we have their kids over and stuff. Now, one thing that was really cool, and uh, this woman, her son was spending the night at my son's house for the first time. And she said to my wife, and me, she said, I understand uh, you have guns in the house. I said, yes we do, but they're all secure, they're all gun safe. I said, your son is safer in my house than any other place on earth. <laughs> And she said, well, thank you. That makes me feel better. Now, 15 years ago, I would have said, you got a problem with that? <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, see, when somebody gives you, when someone gives you an opening, take the opening. I know exactly what you just said. Like the gay thing. And for example, I never call abortion. If you listen to the show, I don't call it abortion. I call it killing a baby. Exactly. You know, and that, that's what I say. I, I say, I'm, I think women should have the right to choose their gun, their husband, their job. I'm not a big fan of women, women killing babies, though, but it makes a great bumper sticker. And that's what they've done. They've hijacked it because if the truth came out, holy moly, my gosh, if, if some of those horrible pictures of the babies and stuff, if, if that ever became mainstream, if that ever... You know, it's funny what ends up in the classroom. You know, My Two Daddies, the book, ends up in the classroom. But you never see a, a broken little child at, at five months or four months. Yes? I have to say I was uh, listening when the interview process took place for your job. And when Bruce Bond came on, I used to listen to him way back when, and he was on it. I thought, oh, please, dear Lord, not let him. It's his <laughs> <laughs> I and what you're saying right now is the thing that I've always admired since I've been listening to you, admire you for me. Thank you. You are very, very talented at the way you deal with people who have opposing views. You help to enlighten them instead of shut the conversation yes. down. Like, Thank you. You know, sometimes you meet people that just take you off and you can, you can take them off. The easiest thing to do is just laugh at them. But if you do want to challenge people, what if I've had a friend for quite a while who's totally left-wing upstate liberal, upstate mm -hmm. New York liberal, we were in the car arguing, and I thought, God, if anybody could hear this, I think we are insane. <laughs> and I said, we were going back and forth, but we had democracy. You know, she had gone to college later in her life, 
Mm -hmm. I went when I was right out of high school, and we were going back and forth, Republic, Democracy, and I brought up Ben Franklin and what he said, we're a republic if you can keep it, the battle of the republic. Mm -hmm. And she shot me down every time. Mm -hmm. What I got her with was, so what is a republic? And she, she stopped. She didn't know what it was. I said, if you don't know what it is, how do you know we're not one? Uh -huh. Usually if you can keep going on with the conversation, yep. you can. If, she did, once she started realizing all the things I was telling her, when she started seeing the come true, she got a little, little so, goofy on me. You know, someone said, uh, and thank you for the comment, somebody said, uh, you never hang up on people. If I want people to listen to my show, <laughs> why would I hang up on them? Why would I say, hey, thanks for listening to my show, you're an idiot. <laughs> I'd rather say, thanks for listening to my show. Come back tomorrow. Buy some advertising. <laughs> Ron Miller, this afternoon, was dumbfounded by your approach. He didn't know what to say. I know. Were... I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, was ex he was expecting, and the, the, the uh, this she is a term, me. anger. He was expecting the angry... The angry white guy is, and you hear that all the time in the media. Chris Matthews must say that five times a year. You know, they're just angry white men. They're racist. They're angry white men. They're anti-women. You know? The, and like I tell people on the air, and this is another example, they took that, uh, I didn't get your name, but they took the war on women thing, which is a joke. Which is, a, how can the party of Bill Clinton say that conservatives <laughs> have a war on women? It's the party of Bill Clinton. It's the party of Anthony Weiner, which is the greatest name ever for what he did. When that happened, I said, oh, "My goodness, I'm in the media." My God, cannot spell conservative. He what now? He cannot spell the word conservative. He wouldn't know a conservative oh. if it bumped into it. Yes, I know, and that I I think. Um, because somebody called, uh, someone called up and, and, like they said, they wanted me to go after him, but I thought, you know what? Why? You guys can, you know, why give him the out? Yeah, why, give him, why give him the opportunity? Why give one listener in Harrisburg the opportunity to say, oh, <clears throat> what a right-wing jerk. He treated Ron Miller like crap. Yeah. Why give him the opportunity? Why? I think, I do think the man lied to me a few times. I think the audience knows it. Mm -hmm. You know? Believe me, I think people may call him a liar in the polls. He didn't need me to do it. We just said about bringing the facts. I mean, if you had the facts, you don't need to get upset or angry. I mean, when we talk about the war on women, uh, it was in New York City, 60, 60 or 65% of the abortions are in the black community. I know. Now, that's like cell genocide. And statistically, half of them are women. You go down to Mississippi, the same thing on abortion. It's, you know, it's cell genocide. And, you know, facts like, People still don't believe me when I tell them that Martin Luther King was a Republican. Mm -hmm. And maybe like there's some great, great yeah. quotes from Martin Luther King, by the way. And and um, anytime you can juxtaposition what they think is going to happen with what the truth is in an entertaining way, whether it's a Bono quote, whether it's um, I I go to a church that's extremely diverse, extremely, and. Um, in fact, I would say, seriously, I'm probably a minority there some Sundays in this, in, in this congregation. But I love saying to people, um, hey, uh, hey, Jackie, um, under what president were more black small businesses created? Bill no Clinton? No, it's Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> and, and that's all you need. That's, that's little, little tidbits like that. Yes, sir. I was going to say, you know, I, I, I agree with your idea about answering questions, being, you know, being able to respond to them. But, but God's message and, and God's uh, message to the culture is a is a robust and a, it's 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 a message that that is moving and can't be stopped. Like Aslan Lyon and uh, Aslan and said, Aslan's on the move, and Jesus is on the move, and and, and his his principles and his power and his love for the culture is on the move. So we're not simply to defend when they assert a certain thing to be true, like mm -hmm. the Germans did in Germany when they would assert that Jews were 
less than human, mm -hmm. but work to propel and to aggressively advance his agenda, his culture. And I think that I think one of the things that, that has made the talk show host of the nation, the the brave men and the brave women, yeah. is that the churches have have stood down to some degree mm -hmm. when it was their opportunity to say, Jesus is about a good economy. He knows how to run mm -hmm. a family's economy, he knows how to run a personal economy, he knows how to get you out of debt. He knows how to run a nation's economy. What's good for a, for a family works for a nation rather conspicuously. And, and same thing for, for, for relations. You know, laws are, laws are about the, uh, the principles that govern the relationships between men. And so Jesus has something to say about that. He has mm -hmm. something to say about immigration. He has something to say about having a, a good tax base and, you know, a strong military, a strong defense. So I think it is the failure of the American church to stand up and assert his kingdom principles his values, and to and to leave that to, you know, and by by default to leave that to the talk show host of the day, when when it's really the church, not just the pastors, mm -hmm. the people that are in the pews too, to assert because I think in the old days, back you know, uh, whenever the old days were, it was those who, uh, it, it was the the parsons, the, the the pastors who stood and declared to the mm -hmm. culture the truth, and then it was the. It was the groundswell of opinion that everybody kind of got around and said, you know, that's true. And, you know, th there are certain truths that are eternally true, certain things are eternally wrong, and we agree with it. But it, it seems now that we're so nice, we're so engaging, we're so reflective, that we aren't asserting with virtue or with nobility. You bring, it, you bring up a good point. You see that a lot in some of the newer churches where pastors are quick to accommodate young people and not... Um, you know, draw a line of where they should be and, and uh, give them the freedom. I just think that in, in 2014, conservatives and Christianity are, we are, we're on a launch pad. We are set, if we just message correctly, we are set as Obamacare goes off the rails, as people, you know, this is the first time as a nation we've had so many abused constitutional issues in common. You know, if your neighbor isn't upset about the Second Amendment, I'm sure they're upset about the first. If they're not upset about the first being abused, they're abusing the fourth, they're abusing the tenth. There's something for everybody in this administration. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I don't know if you've heard today or not, this morning when the guy that took Glenn Beck's place uh, traveled around over the country talking to groups like this, and he said it is unbelievable the amount of under the cover Tea Party people that are getting together for the 2014 election in 2016. That, you know, the small groups like this is what's going to power the correction of the problem. And the news people are really concerned, uh, but they don't know how bad things are. Mm -hmm. I think they're, they're trying to discredit us without even knowing how bad <coughs> they're going to get these. That's a, it's a great point. And I mean, this year you should feel stronger than you've ever felt before. Because uh, I run into people all the time in the media and um, uh, that are coming around and um, see what's happening. I think people have understood. But you've got two messages. The facts are on your side. You've got two great messages. Conservatism is the, it's the right place to be. It drives our country. We're in the majority. And, and you know, you can't really beat Jesus. I mean, no one's, no one's been able to do that. But he's not here to run. One of the things that uh, is encouraging that supports your uh, whole premise of being able to change minds is the change in public opinion on abortion. Mm -hmm. Abortions are down significantly as low as they were in 73. <clears throat> throw versus the weight. Not only that, but the public opinion is flipped. And teen pregnancies are down too. Yes, yes they are. Right. So it's, it's easy to say, you know, the world's going to hell and in one sense it is. But on the other hand, that does not mean we can't make a difference. Yes, sir. that's true. And that's, that's true. the point. We need to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. Mm -hmm. And we can make a difference. And uh, that should give us hope that the effort is worth it. Well, and also, uh, put fun into everything. I know that sounds, uh, don't misinterpret that as being lightweight, but um, I, I have a, a commercial that's going to start running next week. It says, Ken Matthews makes your conspiracies come true. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 
When people are having fun, good things happen. It's just that's the bottom line. It's, it's just so much easier to, to, to laugh than cry. Wouldn't you agree? Sure. Yes, sir. Oh, and one more thing I want to say is I think well, I just told this speech to John and I were talking. We, as the people of this country, are supposed to be, and I just emailed you a couple of times or Facebook you, we are supposed to be the watchmen of this country yes. and our youth. Mm -hmm. Okay, with God on our side, we bring it on. You know, for and just as many there. knuckleheads I see in the media, I see great people. And I, I didn't finish when, when I was coming out of the Wawa. There were two young kids that could have easily been in a, descriptively, they could have been in a, a movie about gangs. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we had the best conversation. We were holding doors for people. We were talking about the weather. And it's because I took the time, and he was probably shocked, to hold the door. And he took the time to say thank you. And then the other guy took the time to say, man, it's cold. I can't believe this. It was 50 degrees the other day. And then I took the time. It was that simple. Because we put the stereotypes away. That's a cliche about stereotypes, but it's true. It's true. Here comes, the, here comes an old white guy in a suit. Oh. You know it's true. Okay? And um, so I think we can have a lot of fun with it. You, you guys are the best audience, period, I've ever had. I, I love, I love audience. Thank you so much. Ken, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, don't be a stranger to action. Love to have you I, will, I like action. <laughs> <laughs> I like it.